Hello and welcome back to another episode of War Tales. My name is Saiken and today we're finishing our blind play playthrough of a legendary respectively expert expert uh, Iron Man difficulty. It has been quite right and I am super stoked to see that everybody uh, finally made it. Today will be a bit of a different episode because there is no more real enemy. We've done the final fight. Uh, the God and the Masters is done. We've killed uh, the biggest enemy. I did that uh, fight against uh, the unique enemy off screen because in all reality it was potentially the easiest of all. This guy didn't even uh, stand a chance. And I didn't want to dilute uh, an entire episode with it. So today we're doing uh, two things. Number one, I wanted to uh, give you an overview over the so-called Sepulchre Doors, which is a additional mechanism or um, a u unique um, treasure hunt that you can do once you're done with the to uh, tombs. And on top of it, I wanted to showcase the abilities of the party one last time. So let's start with the Sepulchre Doors. Uh, they are quite interesting. Uh, sepulchre Doors uh, will require Codices. And Codices are the ones that you get uh, from the Tomes. Uh, I've uh, finished and collected all of uh, the Tomes uh, in the Tombs. Uh, every tomb contains three tomes or codices and uh, over time you need to start researching them. In the tombs you will find a few symbols that you can then uh, learn, runes so to speak. And once you know all of the runes you can completely decipher the um, cod uh, codices. My only criticism with that, I think it's a fantastic system, my only criticism is it takes too long to find all of uh, the clues. And when you've found the clues, some of the items that you're getting in return aren't really worth it. So it's like the Builders Codex, for instance, uh, you can see those three symbols. You then uh, need to find the Sepulchre Door and you need to enter those three symbols and off you go, you profit with loot. I just wanted to show you a couple of the items that you can uh, get out of it. We have, for instance, uh, Nepti's Abacus. Uh, purchasing trade goods also generates a little influence, which is totally nifty. It's a great backpack accessory, potentially one of the strongest, if not the strongest backpack accessory, because um, when you're making money, you are on top of it, also making um, uh, uh, making influence. So that's good. Atlas uh, Ivory Horn is another one. If the unit uh, uh, is a captain or lieutenant, uh, they also apply uh, uh, Captain or Lieutenant skill. They also apply Inspiration, which is the double movement. That's a fantastic one. I would give it an absolute A plus for support uh, units uh, like tanks in this case. So in the um, in this case, the tactical order doesn't only give you orderly, but it also gives everybody a quicker movement, which is absolutely marvelous. Really good um, item. Uh, another one uh, is Dagon's uh, uh, Tablature, which gives the Song of the Ancients. It's a separate um, song that you can use for one um, uh, for uh, um, for one Valor here, and in four meters area, which is a reasonably uh, sized area, everybody, including that uh, unit, gets damage uh, increased by ten percent. Not a bad skill per se. So. Definitely something to look out for. Behedite's uh, uh, compass. I think I got that one as, as well out of um, uh, out of the sepulchre doors. As long as the unit is assigned to the strategy table, they generate a little combat experience, profession experience, and influence. And that's actually not a little. It is quite a bit. So this is an auto level item for everything: combat experience, profession experience, influence um, after rest. So th this is potentially I. I stand corrected with the back, uh, uh, with the uh, backpack uh, um, uh, attachment or accessory. Neptis is good, but this year is the best by by far. Um, I've put it onto Angler because um, uh, Andrew Sanders needed the willpower due to being depressed, 
and therefore we need to go into angler and i can tell you um, from journeyman to master you need around 1300 uh, experience and th uh, this uh, thing here generated a hundred ish experience to put that into context a single angling gives you 10 to 12 experience per catched fish so this thing is super fast uh, you can level the an entire character with just that thing uh, sitting around and being at this uh, strategy table so that's really 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 strong and and a good item uh, we got uh, urkishet's uh, chisel uh, production of all uh, tools in the camp are increased by one uh, that means a 50 percent uh, increase here on the workshop uh, tools which i personally think is a neat as well and then we had Haroon's uh, sandbox. All animal companions start with inspiration for one round. And I think we had uh, Narsus net on top, which is a hundred percent chance to uh, to uh, save the com uh, to uh, to capture an animal companion. Uh, I think both of them are very serviceable and good. Uh, can't really uh, say anything negative. So the trinkets are pretty damn good. Um, on top of it. Uh, uh, on top of it, uh, it's a nice hunt. My only uh, problem is it comes too late in the game. So in terms of equipment, by the way, uh, before we're jumping um, uh, into the episode, I'll to uh, talk you through the sepulchre doors in a second. In terms of equipment, we got a new upgraded one-hand uh, sword with ghost strikes or more Valor generation for Namri. And we got a new dagger, that's uh, the dagger from uh, the guy that we killed here in Drombach uh, with Crippling Blow, which is a fantastic, um, a fantastic option. You gain one poison as well as slow down and slow reflexes, so triple debuff um, onto a single dagger. And boy, boy, I mean, that's just very, very strong together with this incredibly strong offhand. 10% uh, crit damage and critical hit. We're rocking 100 and uh, we're rocking 80 83% crit damage. Uh, we, by the way, do have with um, uh, with Nemri here, uh, Exord, which is the first thing that I'm always doing. 30% uh, crit damage and critical hit. So th he's already mid uh, for sure crit capped, if not 100% crit. This is 100% uh, crit. This is near crit cap, near crit cap near crit cap yeah and the tanks um are de, de facto also critting every single time i skilled overwhelming presence on miss grell uh, as long as uh, we have more armor mind you we're, we're rocking 650 armor so we're having more than almost any enemy uh, every single hit is automatically a critical uh, uh, critical hit and applies confusion. So effectively everyone, with maybe the exception of uh, Namri, who is quote-unquote just at 50% uh, crit, but has a lot of uh, striker uh, potential, um, everybody always uh, uh, crits. Well, which is another small complaint that I would have with uh, the game. I think critical uh, hit is uh, too obvious, uh, too obviously a absolute go-to and must-have stat. Okay, so back to the sepulchre doors. Uh, let's shortly look at uh, the world map. And I will uh, talk you through some of the sepulchre doors. Uh, so we do have a few different uh, codices. Let's uh, start with that. The Builder's Codex um, is the codex that you need for Tiltron. And we will, uh, I will show you exactly where, uh, where to go. So um, Tiltron, first, uh, first um, com um, county. You will, if you have all, th you, first of all, you need all three codices. Uh, you need to have them uh, deciphered in order to actually do the sepulchre door. And the actual symbols will be different in every single playthrough. So there is no um, standard solution for it. The sepulchre door here is right next to Tiltron's jail. You simply can go there and, um, and uh, do the, um, do the, um, door opening 
Next one is the combatants code, which is the Virtus region. So the one a little bit further north, here you go. Next to the camp, this was the first sepulchre door that I ever uh, discovered um, just accidentally, to be honest. Uh, so the combatants um, version uh, would uh, slot in here. Unfortunately, it's not always the um, tombs that you find in the tomb of that specific region. Um, matter of fact, oftentimes uh, they lead you somewhere completely different. The artist codex uh, um, uh, uh, is the Altus region. So that's the independent kingdom down here. The one that is Mount Altus, which is quote unquote secret, uh, where you either need to pay the bandits border crossing or just go over the mountains. The sepulchre door is down here. Currently in the version of the game, the entry table is bugged. Um, uh, it's invisible, but you can click on it and um, or click onto the area where the table should be and it uh, should normally work. Next up, we got the Explorers uh, code, uh, Codex, uh, which is in Arthur's. So down here. The Arthur's one is a bit tricky and it took me a while to, uh, to uh, find. It is right next to the St. Ehlers Abbey, uh, simply here in the middle. Uh, but once you found it, it's relatively straightforward and you can get the reward. Um, which brings us to the last two, uh, the General's Codex. The General Codex is in Ludern. So that's down here. It's all the way up here. Took a while to uh, even get there, uh, but it had a good uh, reward. I think one of the uh, best rewards uh, in there. Um, and finally, we got the Merchant's Codex, which is for Grinmere, so top right region, um, which is all the way up here, out of the city, at uh, that little lake site where you can uh, find the um, sepulchre door. So with that, um, I recommend once you are ready to uh, take that, maybe don't uh, do the same mistake uh, that I did and wait for uh, too long. It actually makes sense to, to do that right away. Um, I also am getting all of the roused uh, fields. Apparently once you've done one match of it, it becomes kind of the new standard in every single region gets a roused field. I personally didn't have the ambition to go through 15 uh, different roused matches and yeah, become the ultra champion. Maybe there is another um, reward there but it uh, just yielded a pony the first time so I'm not that keen of re-repeating re it. Good, that finishes the whole segment around the sepulchre doors and how to deal with it. I think you guys are equally excited to see the party one last time. I will um, uh, yeah, essentially use that party um, in this episode. Then we put them in the garnison uh, because I want to record also a couple of guides um, and I'll hire other basic bitch mercenaries so that whoever uh, watches the guides uh, doesn't spoil themselves uh, with um, the survivor uh, survivors of this party. And I figured for today, if we want to go like as hardcore as possible, we're actually going to the tavern and we're going to find Achieve ourselves a nice mission. Um, I want to see if we can get something that is hard. Um, for starters, there appear to be no more really hard uh, missions here. It's only average. So what we're going to do is we're doing one of those um, harder missions. And um, on top of it, we're uh, starting to instigate a fight with the guards because uh, they tend to be leveled and they tend to be quite strong. Good, we got average difficulty and another average difficulty 
so it really doesn't matter where we go. Let's see the party in action. And if we find guards on the way, we're going to use it to our advantage. Might I interest you? Yeah, that's also a small problem. Not getting, uh, not really getting any uh, probable loot. So. Anyways, here we are. Uh, found a couple of guards right off uh, the bat. Anything to declare? Keep your nose clean and you won't hear from us. So, um, that would uh, bring our wanted up quite a bit, but I think the guards uh, might be a great way of showcasing the strength of the party. So, uh, they are always leveled. Uh, they do have uh, reinforcements coming. So. It's as strong of a fight as it can get. And I think for us, it would be a, a good opportunity. Maybe I'll just uh, do this fight here in this fight only. It's a, a good opportunity to just go out with a little bit of a bang. Um, so six people are going to be the reinforcements here. Six people seem to be coming from that side. Fair enough. Do we have someone else? No. With technically, with the technical orders, we're uh, doing very well because we're always like cl uh, clustered up which is great, um, one of the best abilities. Good, moving in, um, giving everybody t uh, the technical orders. And then my standard, making everybody zealous. Removing guard. <laughs> With 80% guard, there's so little that he can do. Good, end of turn. That's not bad, I wasn't expecting him to move all the way in. But we'll take care of the lieutenant here. Yeah, well, executioner, right? That that one was a painfully efficient uh, documentation of how good executioner is. And these guys haven't even seen reinforcements yet. That was a mistake, by the way. Well, doesn't matter really. One hit and a slowdown and he's bleeding uh, for a solid whooping 190. Even if they would have started closer, we 
already could have gotten to them. How fitting to finish with a spear. Good, motivated means everybody is a bit faster. We have cured all of the bleeding. We're forcing them to cluster up. Yeah, and once they have clustered up sufficiently, we can go in. Wait, we're motivated, right? Oh, that's just damage increase. Never mind. It's not the speed increase. I can tell you though, we can put tactic, uh, tactical order here. What? Why is everybody confused? What? All right, so she has a con uh, confusion uh, skill which is if this unit has more armor than an engaged opponent their attacks always end a critical hit and uh, apply confusion not sure how that could uh, work for our own uh, troops i would guess uh, that's a bug that um, needs to be looked into Not a good showcase for the last uh, match. I wanted to showcase, of course, the awesomeness of the group. And not a bug, but well, it is what it is. Good, finally, enemy reinforcements arrived. Two meager lieutenants on their side is all that the enemies could muster. Oh, here, the guard. Damage dealt by units with attacks of opportunities increased by 25% and applies confused for one round. Okay, well, it was not a mistake, it's just a passive uh, buff of this particular region. Oh, we even have a third and fourth one here. Never mind, fifth one. Couple of enemies there. Nothing major. It's the first wave of reinforcements. Move up. Pull them a little bit closer together. And get them down. Okay, um, tell you what,
That's a nice little disengage. And that is a kill, although he doesn't know it yet. Moves over here and the next ultimate skill just slows all of them down. All of them are bleeding thanks to the crit. And some of them are already taking like that additional uh, that additional infection damage thanks to proc on our uh, on our weapon. So that was a solid like 200 hit point uh, more 300 hit points worth of skill. Good, starts with that. Continues with that. Um, and I would say we're also making our way slowly but surely over here. So these guys are very slowly moving up. We'll shift the flank over here. Roby the bear engages with fragility. Thanks to the high guard of the enemy, not much damage is coming through, but that's okay. We've marked this guy here with Mark of Narses, which means now, naturally, we want to hit him with the other side with a bow. That in itself gives uh, would give us two Valor, but uh, thankfully it gives us four because we are orderly. Pushing that guy back so that we're not having any problem. I really like archers. They are super good in crowd control and we're full in terms of, in, uh, terms of Valor points. We let them come a bit closer. Good, moves in. Has finished his guard and attacks from behind are dealing extra damage. Yeah, we're just trading um, Vela points for uh, triggered attacks at this point. Okay. There we go. And this here will be a great AOE option once uh, once next turn comes around. Okay, so. Going in with our tank. We're having way more Velo than we can ever get rid of. And almost broke his entire guard. Nice. Good. We're just building a front line here, letting them come a bit closer.
And I think for good measure, we got a second uh, suppressor fire. It is such a strong skill that I needed to take it a second time. Everybody is again slowed down. And we're done. Unfortunately, we can't reach them immediately. So I'll resort back to the next best tactics. Which is annoy them with our um, archers. <laughs> And Diddy is really good at annoying people with his incredible range and damage. These here, mind you, have not really taken a single hit so far. Good, let's engage with our bear. We're building up more rage. Oh, we even had a guy over here. Fair enough. Uh, well, in that case, end of turn here. Beginning of turn here and done. Good enemies are clustering up, which is good. You can see the bleed alone is almost killing them. Now comes the part that will be very painful for them. Uh, let's try getting him down with just axes for now. Let me ask you a question, as they say. Down to 15. Ah, we'll finish the fight like true, uh, in true fashion by letting them surrender. I still had uh, uh, a couple of attacks left over. So I think that concludes pretty much it. We got a nice war bow, volley of arrows uh, skill. That actually could be an upgrade. Hmm. Hmm. Cannot be used if engaged in combat, that's fine. Critical hit, it takes a second time. That actually looks very, very good. Um, I think I found one of the rare upgrades. Uh, a double star warbow. And I can even put two tinctures on it. Cool. Well, lucky me, I suppose. Uh, I was just about to say there isn't that much upgrading that you could get. But uh, sometimes the guards definitely do have up, uh, upgrades and uh, they can be quote-unquote um, meaningful. So I would need to think about uh, what to exchange. Maybe the indomitable one. 
the AOE attacks were not bad at all. I mean, they were hitting uh, quite a bit, but this year would be better single target damage. And since we have such a high crit uh, chance on him, that's actually super helpful. I like Narciss Bow, but in all fairness, I think the Valor generation wasn't coming through as much, so maybe I'll exchange that as well. That kind of brings us to the end of today's episode and with the end of today's episode also to the end of the run. I thank you so much for watching. We're maybe going to revisit the party uh, as and when uh, a DLC comes out and uh, when the game is maybe further developed. For now, I think it was a good uh, showcasing of the game. I'll do a separate uh, review video with the good, the bad and the ugly of War Tales. I personally hope uh, you have had fun and enjoyed uh, the run. And uh, stay tuned for the guides and uh, the next playthroughs. Thanks for watching and take care everyone. Bye bye.